power is about to break out at St James's Park, home of Newcastle United. A pressure group led by Metro Centre boss John Hall is set to challenge the present board of directors in a summer of discontent. The group of uh, businessmen, most of whom would have a hard time denying their millionaires, have formed the Magpie Group, and it looks as if the battle for the hearts and the minds of the shareholders will almost certainly lead to an extraordinary general meeting. Frags forward. Keegan's flick. Berardi. Keegan again. Chance here for Keegan. He's done it. Kevin Keegan scores. And St. James's Park goes absolutely wild. If there was a single moment when Newcastle's long-suffering fans believed the glory days could really return, this was surely it. Kevin Keegan's first goal for United brought hope for the 80s. And though the club has made undeniable progress, the directors have never been far from the firing line. Keegan would have suited the Magpie group, the men who now have the board in their sights. They're all United fans, but they're also powerful, successful public figures. And they're rich. This team also has a superstar captain. John Hall turned fantasy into fact with the Metro Centre. Last Thursday, he took another step nearer, making a second dream come true. Top accountants, architects, financiers and lawyers gave a final briefing to the all-star lineup. There was the respected brewery managing director, the leisure king whose wine bars have made millions, the comedian who laughed all the way to the bank, and the club shareholder who's never stopped fighting the board. All united behind the man they believe can outscore the present directors. I'm only trying to be a catalyst, in a sense, for all the people out there who want to invest money in the club. I don't want to take it over. I don't really I want it just to be a catalyst. I put our money on the table and I put forward a business plan, which I feel as a businessman is, is the right thing to do. To put <clears throat> to secure a new share issue, to raise about ten million pounds from a share issue and borrowed money. To put that money to work into the football ground, to um, reconstruct the ground, to build the Leases End and Gallagher End, in a sense to strengthen the um, the playing staff, the management staff and the promotions, put it all together in a package, uh, a business plan, which we're this evening uh, bringing together. I want to see success at Newcastle. That's the first concept, as we all do. I think even the present board wants to see that. But I think it's time, after 30 odd years, that we had some new ideas in the club. This is a glimpse of Newcastle United when they were the Liverpool of the land. Unfortunately, it was in the first 10 years of this century. During that golden era, they won the league three times, the FA Cup once, and were beaten finalists on four other occasions. This is the last Newcastle United side to win the league in 1927. And ironically, one of the stalwarts was Stan Seymour, the father of the present chairman. He, in fact, was the first major critic of the board before he became a director himself. Another historic moment, the last goal scored by a Newcastle United player in the FA Cup final. Mitchell shows superb ball control as he manoeuvres into position. His play is worthy of Matthews himself as he prepares for his shot at goal. Fingertips deflected, but Hannah crashes it home. 3-1. The scorer was George Hanna, 33 years ago. Since then, Newcastle have won one major trophy, the European Fairs Cup, and the fans made the most of it. Over 30 years, we've had no real success. If you're running a business, and my business didn't show success for 30 years, even Time Tees Television, you wouldn't be there tomorrow. I'm just looking at it from the past and saying, you know, we haven't achieved anything, so we must examine why we haven't achieved it. But we're willing to in inject a large sum of money. You know, I've made my money from the area, the northeast. I'm willing to put back some of it into Newcastle. But I want some say I'm going to do that, as do the other shareholders, as do the other people wanting to put cash in, and the supporters. The Magpie Group have reached the ordinary Newcastle fans through the pages of the city's evening newspaper. The Chronicle unashamedly backed the campaign. The black and white response has been pledges from the public to buy shares if they get the chance. 5,000 forms have been returned, promising more than £800,000. The minimum was £10. Many offered considerably more. It's very hard to be unbiased about a subject like this. The, uh, the feeling amongst the supporters has been for many years now that Newcastle United should be about winning silverware. Uh, and that hasn't come through 33 years, you know, since uh, something like that happened in Newcastle. So it wasn't hard to, to get behind these people. We've done several campaigns on the Chronicle in recent years and we've never, ever had a response like this.
pledges are one thing, but actually getting the cash out of people is another. Do you think that people would live up to that? I, I think they'll more than live up to it. I think they might even double it or treble it when it comes down to hard cash. I think they're more than happy to put their money where their mouths are on this matter. The stories behind the campaign have flowed not so much from the keyboard as the heart of sports editor John Gibson. He has a crusader zeal. It's not a personal campaign against uh, people up at St James's Park. It is a simple effort to get success into a club which I consider very dear to me and is dear to a load of fans. And never again will the same fans be able to come up to me and say, you did nothing. In fact, they're now saying, thanks for having a go. Regardless of what happens, you've had to go on our behalf, and we appreciate that. And basically, that is what we are. We're just the voice of the man in the street. The Newcastle directors themselves have often had to take more abuse from the terraces and the players the fans pay to watch. The habit of scoring own goals certainly hasn't helped. They signed Kevin Keegan, a masterstroke, but he left urging them to spend big to progress. Manager Arthur Cox steered them to promotion, but he quit when he felt he wasn't wanted. The club started to develop exciting young players like Chris Waddle, but he was sold to Spurs, where he's now an established England international. The fans switched behind another hero, Peter Beardsley, who went one better, a World Cup star overnight. But the fans saw red again when 1.9 million took him to double champions Liverpool. They believed too much of the cash went into paying for the new stand, which had to be built when the old one was condemned. The board insists its impressive facilities will generate cash, and they point to their signings. Paul Goddard cost 400,000. Half a million went on making Mirandinha the league's first Brazilian. Then last month, 750,000 for John Robertson lent more weight to the board's defensive record. I think we both have the same intent for the club. But I think now, in a sense, that the cash isn't there in the club. If the present board, in a sense, would sit down and look at our business plan, and if they could raise the cash, and put forward the ideas which we're proposing. If they accept the right ones, I would quite willingly step back. But in a sense, you know, we believe passionate businessmen and supporters of Newcastle, it needs a large injection of money into the club. Money's not the only thing, but it's a start. If you're financially sound, you can move forward. If the Magpie Group are to succeed, they have to win over not just the board, but the club's small squad of shareholders. It may simply be a matter of money talking, but the group's greatest strength lies in the depth of talent they've signed. Respected figures have publicly stepped forward and declared it was time for change. Clearly, the, the, uh, John and, and, and Douglas Hall, who we know well, have put a great deal of work and effort and thought into this. Um, I would like to see it come about, but it all depends on the shareholders. It depends on, on majorities and, and voting powers and rights and so on. But um, I'm confident that it will. It's just uh, an extension of what we presently do. People tend to know our company for wine bars, but we're involved in all kinds of leisure parks, and this is just another leisure park, albeit presently football orientated. There's a lot more muscle this time. I mean, before there was me on my own. Uh, since then, there's been Brian Johnson on his own, but now there's about a half a dozen of us, and we've started our fighting fund, and we've really taken uh, the right type of advice. We've got a close involvement with John Hall in his other ventures, and, and uh, he's a very impressive man with very impressive ideas, and he's got vision and inspiration, and I think that's what's needed uh, in this particular case. Even if John Hall doesn't keep the directors under pressure this summer, then Paul Gascoigne almost certainly will. If he follows the Waddle Beards the exit route, an anti-board feeling will swell up once again. It isn't easy to find an independent view on Tyneside. But over on Weir's side, a man who made millions out of cars has first-hand knowledge of successful businesses, football clubs and boardroom battles. His personal honours board is certainly more impressive than Newcastle's. But when Tom yeah, Cowie okay. took over rivals Thanks Sunderland, he found out football really is a funny old game. He also believes it's ego that motivates men to move from the business world to the football world. He's a personal friend of mine, John. He's a very nice fellow and a very successful man. Uh, I can understand his frustration because he will be looking at, uh, once again, this is a football supporter rather than a businessman in my view. I really am uh, at somewhat of a loss to understand the criticism of the present board, actually. Because, all right, uh, perhaps they're not the most charismatic board in the world, but I think their performance uh, would stand up to investigation. They haven't yo-yoed up and down the divisions. They come in for criticism, but there again, who in football in the Northeast doesn't? I hope, in a sense, that I can bring success. That cannot be guaranteed with anyone. 
but I do know that it's time for new ideas, new thinking, and an injection, a large injection of money into Newcastle United. Well, what's 10 million pounds in football? Uh, you get 10 million pounds, um, the, the players know you've got it. They'd want 9 million straight away because they're, they're rather mercenaries, we all know. I think it's the greatest challenge the Newcastle United board have ever faced and are ever likely to face. And if they survive this one, they'll survive anything. Do you think the present Newcastle board will survive this one? I do. I really do. Because, A, as I say, their track record's not that bad. Um, perhaps their PR work leaves something to be desired. Uh, perhaps a, a good spokesman um, appointed for just that operation would make them a lot more friends than they've got at the moment. You have to win things when you're a football club. You know that. When you go to business, you have to get success. The football club needs a success which is winning titles, winning leagues. And I want to see United, when eventually Europe comes, to be a champion among champions in Europe. My advice to John would be, um, don't do it. Keep all of your money and put it to a better use. <laughs>